Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 23 of the chapter Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. We have been discussing the various types of chemical reactions of Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes and I told you that there are three categories of reactions that we are going to study. The first is nucleophilic substitution reaction, the second is elimination reaction and the third is reaction with metals. I have completely described nucleophilic reactions to you in the, for, in the past few videos. So now we'll come to the second type of reactions of haloalkanes and haloarenes, which are elimination reactions. As you understand from the word elimination, eliminate means to remove. So an elimination reaction would be one in which from the haloalkane, something would be removed. And what is removed is usually uh, a halogen, the halogen atom, and a hydrogen. Therefore, these reactions are also called dehydrohalogenation reactions. Dehydro, you know how when we say it is D, D means removal of hydro is hydrogen and halogen. So it is a dehydrohalogenation reaction. The removal of a hydrogen and the halogen from the haloalkane would be an elimination reaction. So let us understand how this takes place. Let me read this statement first. For, so that you can understand uh, and then I'll start explaining it. When a haloalkane with a beta hydrogen is heated with alcoholic solution of potassium hydroxide, an elimination of the beta hydrogen and the halogen from the alpha carbon takes place and an alkene is formed. In order to understand this sentence, let us again remember what, uh, what an alpha carbon is, what is a beta carbon. In a haloalkane, the carbon to which the halogen is attached is known as the alpha carbon. It is the main carbon to which the halogen is attached. Therefore, the properties of that compound basically depend on that halogen. So, the carbon bearing the halogen is known as the alpha carbon. Now, any carbon which is attached to the alpha carbon would be a beta carbon. Right? So the carbons adjacent to the alpha carbon would be beta carbons and the hydrogen which is attached to a beta carbon would be known as a beta hydrogen. Right? For example, this is a carbon. The halogen X is attached to this carbon. So this is an alpha carbon. The carbon next to it is a beta carbon. And the hydrogen attached to the beta carbon would be known as the beta hydrogen. So it says, when a haloalkane with a beta hydrogen, it means the hydrogen attached to the beta carbon. When a haloalkane with a beta hydrogen is heated with an alcoholic potassium hydroxide solution with a base. Potassium hydroxide is a strong base. So when it is heated with a base, an alcoholic solution of potassium hydroxide an elimination of the beta hydrogen takes place and the halogen from the alpha carbon takes place. So when it is heated with um, alcoholic potassium hydroxide, that is with a base, what happens is that the hydrogen from the beta carbon and the halogen from the alpha carbon are removed from the, from the haloalkane. And when you remove two of the components, what happens to the electrons? Those electrons would form a second bond here. So what you get is an alkene. So as a result of this, an alkene is formed. When you remove two bonds, you get one bond here and that bond would be, and I'll understand, I'll explain it to you in terms of electron transfer, how this takes place. Let me now read this sentence again so that you understand the basic definition of an elimination reaction. When a haloalkane with a beta hydrogen is heated with alcoholic solution of potassium hydroxide, that is a base, an elimination of the beta hydrogen and the halogen from the alpha carbon takes place and an alkene is formed. Since you are removing hydrogen, and halogen from this molecule, it is known as a dehydrohalogenation reaction, right? Since you're removing hydrogen and the halogen, it is known as D, D means removal, hydrohalogenation reaction. Now look here, this is the base. 
if it is KOH, it means the OH negative is the basic part. So the OH negative, which is the basic part, it attacks this hydrogen, which is the beta hydrogen. And when it attacks the beta hydrogen, it combines with the hydrogen. And what happens to the hydrogen? Hydrogen leaves as H positive. And if it leaves as H positive, it leaves, it loses its electron and it moves and combines with the base. Now, for example, this was the base that is OH and H would result in the formation of water. OH negative and H positive would result in the formation of water. So whatever is the base, it combines with the hydrogen, results in the formation of BH. Now, the two electrons were in this bond, one electron was given by carbon, one electron was being contributed by hydrogen. When hydrogen leaves as H positive, it loses both its electrons and these two electrons, they come here and they form the second bond. At the same time, the halogen, it moves out and when it moves out, it takes the electrons, two electrons, so just as hydrogen was attached to the beta carbon, and both of them were contributing one electron each. Similarly, the halogen here is attached to the alpha carbon and both the alpha carbon and the halogen are contributing one electron each. But due to the formation of a double bond here, and the electron density really increases and the two electrons of this bond are pushed away and the halogens, halogen, which is highly electronegative, takes the two electrons and moves away as the halide ion. It moves away as the halide ion and therefore now if you count the number of electrons these two electrons if one electron from hydrogen was taken to form the double bond here one electron of this carbon has been lost to the halogen so the number of electrons the octet around the carbon is still balanced the, the number of electrons is still balanced yet the halogen leaves as X negative and the hydrogen leaves as H positive and it results in the formation of an alkene and the base combined with the hydrogen to form BH and the halogen leaves as X negative. If it is chlorine, it would be chloride. So it leaves as X negative. Now that you have understood this, it's important to understand that in a chain, the alpha carbon may not be just one. The chain could be extended on this direction. Therefore, Around the alpha carbon, there could be two beta carbons. There could be a third beta carbon here also. So there is a possibility of other beta carbons. So whenever such a compound comes in, where you have more than one beta carbon or more than one beta hydrogens, then there is a chance of any of those beta carbons losing the hydrogen. So what decides which beta hydrogen, beta hydrogen will be lost? To understand that or to explain that, a rule was given by a Russian scientist who was Zetsev. Zetsev is, it is pr sometimes pronounced as Setsev. Although Zetsev said that when you have an alpha, a beta carbon, which is attached to the alpha carbon, the beta carbon, which is more substituted, the product or the resultant product, which has more alkyl groups attached to it will be favored. In order to understand this, I'll, let me explain this further. Let me first read this. If there is a possibility of more than one product due to two beta hydrogens or, or two beta carbons which have hydrogens to it, then one alkene is favored. You will get both, both the uh, alkenes will be formed. That is, if you had one carbon here and one carbon here, you would get two alkenes, one with these two carbons and the other alkene with these two carbons. But the one, one of them will be favored and one of them will not be uh, produced in the same quantity. So the favored one would be, can be explained according to the ZSEF rule. And what is the ZSEF rule? This rule was given in 1875 by the Russian scientist ZSEF. It said, that in dehydrohalogenation reactions, that is the reaction that I just explained to you, elimination reaction. In dehydrohalogenation reactions, the preferred product is that alkene which has the greater number of alkyl groups attached to the doubly bonded carbon atom. 
that alkene will be favored where the two carbons which have got the double bond if the number of alkyl groups attached to it are more to the double bond that uh, product would be the favored one let us take an example here this is 2 bromo pentane 2 bromo pentane look at the molecule ch3 ch2 ch2 ch ch2 so this is one beta carbon this is bromine so this is the alpha carbon and this alpha carbon has two beta carbons. This is one beta carbon which has a beta hydrogen attached to it. And this is one beta carbon to which a beta hydrogen is attached. Let me write this as H. So you understand from this that there are, there are two beta hydrogens. One beta hydrogen is this and one beta hydrogen is this. And this is the alpha carbon and this is the halogen attached here. Now, there would be a competition between this hydrogen and the hal halogen to be left, to be leaving the molecule to make the double bond here, or the other product could be where the hydrogen from this carbon and the halogen from the alpha carbon is lost, therefore the double bond should be here. So, what are the two products that you get? The first product that you get would be here, when you lose this hydrogen. When you lose this hydrogen from the second carbon to the third carbon, you have the double bond between the second and the third carbons, right? <laughs> that is pent to in is the product. And if this hydrogen is lost, again, it is alcoholic KOH you are using. It is the same reaction that I've explained, but you'll be getting two products. So this time you will get a product where the double bond is here. The double bond is here because this hydrogen and this bromine is lost. So the double bond will be between these two carbons. So you get pent one in. Which out of these two will be favored according to ZSEF's rule? According to ZSEF rule, which one will be favored? The one where the double bond has a larger number of alkyl groups attached to it. So if you look at this one, this, these two carbons have the hydrogens attached to it and a methyl group attached here and an ethyl group attached here. Do you see how many alkyl groups are attached to this carbon? One alkyl group. How many alkyl groups are attached to this carbon? Second alkyl group. Take a look here in this product. To this carbon, there are no alkyl groups attached. They are only hydrogens. But to this carbon, a propyl group is attached, right? Although the propyl group is larger in size, it is only one alkyl group. But here, you have two alkyl groups attached to the carbons which are forming the double bond. So, according to Setsef, this is the product that should be favored because it has a larger number. It is more substituted, we call it. So it has a larger number of alkyl groups attached to the carbons which are sharing the double bond. And that is what we observe. We see that pentuene is out of the products. 81% of the product would be pentuene and only 19% would be pent1ene. Right? So this was the elimination reaction or dehydrohalogenation. But then there is one little uh, thing that I must explain here more. We said that we take alcoholic KOH, which is a strong uh, base, and it is a pretty small molecule. Sometimes if you take a bulkier base, if you take a base that is bulkier, which is larger in size, in that case, you will get the opposite product. The reason is very simple to understand. If the base is bulkier, here, if it comes and attacks here, it would be easier because this hydrogen has only hydrogens attached to it. But this hydrogen has got a, this hydrogen has, uh, sorry, this carbon has got a, a large alkyl group attached to it. Or in this case, take a look, here both the carbons have got alkyl groups attached to, it, to them. So the larger the number of alkyl groups, the more steric hindrance is created. What is steric hindrance? They are bulky groups. So if the group that is the base that is coming in itself is bulky, it would choose the product which has less bulkier groups or which is less substituted. So in that case, when you have a bulky base, you expect the addition or sorry, the elimination to be anti-ZSF. Take a look here. There is one example. Here you have methyl group attached here and chlorine is here. If you take KOH and uh, what are the two products that you will get? 
what is happening here out of the koh what is the base the base is oh negative so the oh negative it comes and attacks this it comes and attacks what are the hydrogens that you, that you will have if this is the alpha carbon you would have one hydrogen here right and you would have the other hydrogen would be here so these are the two beta hydrogens. So this OH negative can come and attack either this hydrogen or it can attack this hydrogen, removing it completely. And the halogen, of course, is removed. So when the OH negative comes and attacks this hydrogen, the bond breaks and it takes the hydrogen away. But these two electrons would result in the formation of a bond, a double bond here. So hydrogen is removed at the same time Cl leaves as Cl negative taking away these two electrons therefore the product that you get is this one. And here the double bond that is a, he, he, present here has got an alkyl group here and of course these are just the regular chain. So this has got more alkyl groups so the, according to Setsef rule this should be your major product and it is the major product. And what is the other product that you'll get? The OH negative comes and attacks this hydrogen. It attacks this hydrogen, takes away the hydrogen. And the two electrons that are given from hydrogen, they come and form a double bond here. So this is your second product, but this is the minor product. Why? Because around these two carbon atoms which have the double bond, the substitution of an alkyl group is less. Here. Out of these two carbon atoms, there was an additional alkyl group. So according to Setsep, more the branching, more uh, possibility that product which has more branches or which has more substitution would be favored. But if instead of using alcoholic KOH, had we have used a tertiary butoxide. If we used tertiary butoxide, what is tertiary butoxide? It is this molecule this base here. It is carbon with CH3, CH3, CH3 and O negative here. So if instead of OH negative, you have such a big, huge, bulky base, it would not be easy for such a bulky base to come and attack this carbon, the hydrogen of this carbon, because this carbon already has a, a methyl group attached to it. So due to steric hindrance, due to uh, two large molecules, they cannot come close and react the the what do the tertiary butoxide would prefer to form a product like this it would prefer to attack uh, attack this hydrogen that is this hydrogen and form this product instead because if it comes here there is a hindrance by the methyl group but if it comes here there is no hindrance by any other substituted group therefore the addition here the major product within the case of tertiary butoxide uh, would be the uh, the one where there is which is against the Setsef rule. So this is important to understand that how steric hindrance can make uh, can change the major product in an elimination reaction. With this, I will wrap up this video. But now that you have understood a little bit about steric hindrance, we will uh, in the next video I'll be telling you about the difference between. Uh, or rather the competition between two types of reaction that is elimination versus substitution. When a reaction has to take place, sometimes due to the steric factor, the reaction may not undergo elimination at all and may undergo substitution instead. But that will be explained in the next video. So if you found today's video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.